Hello, and welcome to the archives. Uh, last episode that I did, I kind of messed up. I, I expected it to be... I expected Fear the Masses was going to be the next data pack that was going to be released, and I was wrong. Absolutely wrong. This is the next data pack that has already been released. Uh, business first. So... I thought, well, since I messed up, I think Fear the Masses is going to be like the last data pack in the cycle. So I've kind of done the last data pack early. Um, if things change and I made a mistake with the what cards are actually going to be in it, I will kind of redo that episode perhaps. But if things stay the same, I've kind of already done it. So uh, super sneak peek, I guess. Regardless, um, we're going to tackle the uh, super fun of business first. All right, so let's hit with the identity first off that is included in this data pack. It is a corp identity. Forge and Techie. We have, I believe, I think that's Palana Foods. Sustainable growth. It's got a very... Uh, elegant looking building that almost looks like it's covered in vines with the green uh, the green things going all around it and whatnot it's a division identity uh, 45 minimum card size a minimum deck size 15 influence the first time each turn the runner draws a card gain a credit so that's um, <laughs> that's interesting it doesn't say that they have to draw a card through a card ability or have to spend a click to draw a card. It's just the first time they draw a card, you gain a credit. So that could be helpful in having an identity that gives you money every turn. That could be very helpful. I, I kind of like the idea of, of having a bit of economy being driven just by the identity itself. So yeah, I'm, I'm all for that. And I think, I was only kind of looking, but I think some of the other Jinteki cards, there's a couple more, I think they help promote this one. Let's, let's have a look at that, shall we? On to the next card. Uh, aha, yep, here we have, right here, Palana Agroplex. One credit to res. Five credits to trash, a facility that's an asset, two influence rating. When your turn begins, each player draws a card. So, as long as this is up and active, you're forcing the player to draw a card. Now, yeah, the first time each turn the runner draws a card gain a credit it's was the other one was Palana foods and this one is when your turn begins each player draws a card so basically if I'm reading that right and if if a turn is simply the runner's turn or the corpse turn then you could be drawing two credits every every cycle of uh, of turns because when your turn begins as the corp, you would force the player to draw a card, the runner and yourself. So you would be drawing two cards. The runner, oh, yeah, because you get your mandatory draw. But then also when your turn begins, you have to draw a card. So you'd be drawing two, the runner would be drawing one, and then if the runner drew a card on their turn you would also get a credit. I think that's how that works. Expensive to build, but dramatically more efficient than traditional farming. Agroplexes are emblems of the inevitable corporation, corporize, corporatization of the food industry. Okay. Interesting. Let's, let's check the next one. See what we have here. Oh, yes. Now here... Here we have a Cogate. Harvester. One, one credit to res. Three strength Cogate. With 
two subroutines. Both subroutines say the runner draws three cards and then discards down to his or her maximum hand size. So, <laughs> Harvester, you're forcing the runner to run through their deck. And from the way I understand it, when the corp runs through their deck, if they go to, go to draw a card, their mandatory draw, because that's why they have it, if they go to draw a card and there's no cards in that deck, they lose the game. But the runner, if the runner loses all their cards out of their deck and it's all in their discard pile, they have to keep playing with just what they have. The game doesn't end for them. So this, if they don't have a code gate and want to try and get through that, you're forcing them to draw three cards and discard down to maximum hand size. So you're forcing them to trash cards if they keep their hand full. And going up against Jinteki, that's not a bad thing to do, is keep your hand full. Oh, that's, that's a nice little card. Only one influence on this beast. So it's not bad. It's not bad at all. I kind of like the idea of, of milling the, uh, the runner. Uh, we can help others, yet also help ourselves. Soraya Suresh, VP Public Programs. Okay. Let's, uh, let's bounce off over to the next card. Here we've got some HB, Haas Bioroid cards. Now we've got an asset here. Lakshmi, I believe it's pronounced Lakshmi. Uh, smart Fabrics. One credit to res. Three credits for the runner to trash. Three influence costs. Now it's an asset that whenever you res a card, place one power counter on Lakshmi Smart Fabrics. The paid ability of X hosted power counters. So that's whatever, uh, whatever power counters you want, however many you want to spend. Reveal an agenda worth X points from HQ. So uh, you could spend three power counters off it. Reveal an agenda worth three uh, from HQ. The runner cannot steal copies of that agenda for the remainder of this turn. Okay. So that, that could be... <laughs> Yeah, that's the sort of thing you would do. Uh, you would have two copies of the same agenda in your hand. Um, and you would install one and start to uh, start to res it. Then, because that is, as long as you have the amount of power counters on it you need, as long as you have it on there, uh, in the middle of a run, you could trigger that paid ability and go pink reveal that from your hand and go you can't steal copies of this agenda that way even if they get into the server and get at the agenda they can't steal it until their next turn which gives you another turn to advance and score it that's nice that is nice i like i like lakshmi smart fabrics uh yeah i, I could definitely make use of this Three uh, influence, so this is a heavy, heavy um, Hospiroid card. This is the sort of card that Hospiroid is the one that tends to keep it. it. It's not impossible to be in other decks, but usually for such high influence cards, uh, it's one of them things that you either have to build your deck around it or or just leave it with the, the HB boys. Okay, on to the next card. Let's see, where are we? Do, do, do. Uh huh. Here we have a asset facility, advanced assembly lines. One credit to res, one credit for the runner to trash. So this is an easy one for the runner to trash. Uh, oh, okay, that's a little interesting. This is sort of a, an economy card, maybe? Uh, when you res advanced assembly lines, gain three credits. So you spend one credit to res it, but you gain three. So it's like gaining two credits for free. 
you can trash it to install a non-agenda card from HQ, paying the install cost. You cannot use this ability during a run. So this just lets you install anything, ice, probably, because it's uh, almost anything that's installed in a server is free. You don't have to pay for it. But installing ice on successive levels out costs a credit per level out, uh, I believe. That's, that's how I've always played it, anyways. So installing a non-agenda card from HQ could be ice, could be anything else. Paying the install cost. Um, so you got to have the money. You cannot use this ability during a run. Yeah, I think this is kind of designed to install ice uh, just instantly. Because you can res a card for free. Or you can res a card without spending a click. You just have to pay the money. So basically, you're paying one credit, you're getting three back. So you're getting two credits for free, basically, when you res this. You can then trash it as a paid ability and install an ice using the two credits, the one or the two credits that you just received, to install more ice. Yeah, it's not, not bad. I, could, I would use this. I would use this. Because there's, there's times I want to install ice, but I don't get the money, and I don't get the clicks that I want to waste on it. I, yeah. This basically lets you start building out ice faster and for free, basically. Not bad. Only a two influence cost on this. That one trash cost I don't like. <laughs> Just... Personally, because it's too easy for the run of the trash. I like cards with high trash costs. Alright. Let's go to the next card. Here we have an Operation Alliance. Uh, product Recall. Zero credit res. Uh, Operation Alliance. Now, the art on this card looks interesting because you've got this uh, group of uh, armed men surrounding a woman, and given the blank expression on her face, I have a feeling she's a bioroid. So you've got this team capturing a bioroid, and they call it Product Recall. Uh, for Hoss Bioroid, the thematic elements fit quite nicely. Uh, zero credits to res it, or to play it. Two influence costs, Operation Alliance. This card costs zero influence if you have six or more non-Alliance HB cards in your deck. Trash a resed asset or upgrade. If you do, gain credits equal to its trash cost. All right. Interesting. So you can, that allows you to trash shit and just gain credits off of it. I can see how that would be useful, especially with some of the higher trash cost ones. That could get you like three, four, five credits for a trash, just boom. But I like it. I like it. It's nice. Okay, here we have a Remote Data Farm. It is an agenda for NBN. Four credits to uh, advance this. Two agenda points worth it. It's an expansion agenda. Your maximum hand size is increased by two. Data, not food, is one of the biggest imports from the Gujarat district of Mumbad. And for a minute I thought this was like, just like a thing, like a server room. And then I look at the art and I'm like, wait a minute, that's a little man standing beside those great big towers. So it can't be a server. And then I realize, no, wait, it is a server. It's just a really big one. So, yeah, that's, um, I haven't really played around with hand sizes a lot in my games. 
but that would definitely make things uh, more interesting. Remote data farm. Hmm. Not sure I would use this in my MBN deck, but you never know. You never know. All right, on to the next card. Here we have Disposable HQ. It is an upgrade ambush. Zero credits to uh, zero credits to res it, five credits to trash, one influence cost. If disposable HQ is accessed from R and D, the runner must reveal it. When the runner accesses disposable HQ, you may add any number of cards from HQ to the bottom of R and D. Hmm. I can see I can see how that would be useful, especially if you have a lot of agendas in your hand and you don't want them there. That could that could do the trick. Five credit trash, I like that for zero credit res. That's one of those um, agendas that you can be like, I I trash and I get all this money. It's not it's not bad. I would use this in my MBN deck. I don't know if I would actually throw cards in the bottom of my deck. Maybe. Maybe not. It depends on how aggressively the runner is attacking me. Okay. And now we're on to Wayland. We got a Wayland agenda. New construction. Four credit uh, advancement cost for two agenda points. You got this towering looking building being constructed here in the artwork. It's an agenda public. Oh, it's one of those. Install new construction face up. So you, you have to install it so that the runner knows this is an agenda. Oh, I, I've never really played around with those. Waylon seems to have a few public agendas in their, their little midst. And I, I don't I don't know if I like them. Uh, whenever you advance new construction, you may install a card from HQ in a new server and res that card, ignoring all costs if there are five or more advancement tokens on new construction. So if you've got less than five advancement tokens on it, you can just install a card from HQ in a new server whenever you... Whenever you put a credit on this, an advancement token, sorry. But yeah, you, you just you spend the click and the credit to put an advancement token on it, and you get to install a card from HQ in a new server, if you want. That could be, that could be useful. And if you get five or more, as long as you've got that that server that this agenda is in well protected, you could be building out with like assets and agendas. For 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 um for my buddy's uh, Argus security deck that he has, uh, that that would be deadly, because he's got a lot of assets and uh, upgrades. Mm. Yeah, I, I don't know as I like this one. And I don't mean that in... I don't like it as a card. Because all of the cards are interesting and wonderful. I just don't know as if I like it being available to people to use against me. <laughs> this is what I mean. Okay. Uh, yeah. So, on to the next card. Here we have an asset, four credit res cost, three credit trash, three influence rating, Mumbad Construction Company. Asset. When your turn begins, place one advancement token on Mumbad Construction Company. Two credits. For a paid ability, move one advancement token from Mumbad Construction to a face-up card. Oh. 
Oh, okay. I think I know. I think I know how this how this works. Yeah. See, the combo that I'm seeing here is that you get Mumbag Construction Company down first. You get it rezzed, protected, and every turn, when your turn begins, you place advancement tokens on it. So the advancement tokens start piling up on Mumbag Construction. Now, a paid ability, it only costs two credits. It doesn't cost a click to move advancement tokens. So once you've got five, six advancement tokens on Mumbag Construction, then you can spend a click, install new construction, that previous agenda we were looking at, into a server, and then go, I spend two credits to move an advancement token. You spend two credits, move the advancement token onto it, then the whenever you advance new construction triggers, you can install a card from HQ for free into a new server. And then you can just spend credits, the two credits to move the advancement tokens until you get enough on here to score it. And you can do that without spending clicks in a turn. Oh, I don't... Oh, that, that would make some Whalen decks very interesting. It would. Because as long as you have the credits to spend, it's not going to take actual clicks to to uh, to advance your agendas because you can move the you can move them but it's only with face up agendas because it's like to a face up card oh oh yes mm. This would also be useful on ice that can be advanced because it just says a face-up card. It doesn't say it doesn't say that it has to be an agenda. Anything that can we use advancement tokens on it face up. That's that's fantastic. But yeah, this is for like new construction, and I believe there's another one that they have another couple that they have. Uh, was it Oak Town Renovation, or uh, there's another one I can't remember that are that are public agendas. This is what this particular one. It would let you just I install this face up for a click. I spend eight credits to move four advancement tokens. I score it, and that's without spending any second clicks, as far as I can tell, because it is a paid ability. Oh, that's evil. That's evil. And there's nothing saying that it's you can only use it once per turn. Mm hmm mm hmm Mumbad Construction Company. That's that's a nice little card. I like it. I like it a lot. Okay. Let's bamf off to the next uh to the next we have a neutral agenda. Four credit advancement cost. Two credit. Sorry about that. Two, uh, four credit advancement cost. Two agenda points. It is the corporate sales team. Now the corporate sales team, we've got an agenda expansion. When you score corporate sales team, place 10 credits on it. When each player's turn begins, take credit from corporate sales team. So this gives you 10 credits over five turns, basically. Because your turn begins, you take a credit. The runner's turn begins, you take a credit. You got it, we sell it. They buy it, everyone wins. And it's got these four people, two guys and two girls... I almost picture in my head like Ocean's Eleven where they're, they're all like kind of walking, looking all cool and stuff. 
and this is no agenda points on or no influence cost on this one because it's a neutral a lot of neutral don't have the uh, influence not bad this one is not bad at all I like it on to the next let's see here boop oh here we have the pad factory two credit res three credit trash two influence rating on this neutral so it's not entirely neutral got an influence cost pad factory asset alliance factory this card causes zero influence if you have three pad campaigns in your deck now that I like three pad campaigns I would do that I like pad campaign as an as a um, d -d 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 economy card once it's active click place one advancement token on a card you cannot score that card until your next turn begins So with a click, once it's active, you can just throw an advancement token. It doesn't cost you credit. It's not bad. Not bad at all. But I like that it costs zero influence if you have three pad campaigns in your deck. That's a nice little bit of a thematic um, connection that they've got going on. It's, it's nice. I like it. Yeah, I would use this. I would totally use this. Very cool. All right. Now, let's get on to the runner cards. The runner cards. That's right. We're going to have some Anarch going on here. We have EMP device. Hardware bomb. One credit to install this hardware. You trash it. The corp cannot res more than one piece of ice for the remainder of this run. Use this ability only during a run. It has the flavor text. No, don't set that off here. Four influence rating. Now, this is one of the Anarch heavy ones. They kind of only want the Anarchs to have it. But you, you, you make them... That could be evil to set off. Going into a server with a lot of... A lot of ice piled up that hasn't been rezzed. You're like, I make a run. Trash this card. You cannot res more than one piece of ice for the remainder of this run. <clears throat> and then you force them to pick and choose, well, which ice do I res? Do I res any of them? This is the sort of thing you would definitely want to use uh, set off once you know for a fact that you've got an agenda hiding in that server yeah this one i can see sticking in my reina roja deck okay the next one we have is dewan it is a program virus one credit to install one memory unit cost it doesn't seem to have any strength to it uh, only a one influence cost as well. When D1 is installed, choose a server. As an additional cost to install a card in or protecting that server, the corp must pay one credit. Trash D1 if the corp purges virus counters. Hmm. So you're forcing the corp to add money. And nothing says you can't install multiples of these and have the um, have it stacking. So you can install this and go, I pick that server. Install another one, I pick the same server. Now it's going to cost you two credits to install any card in or protecting it. Then it's up to three credits if you get three in your deck, which you can only have. Okay, nice. I like that. I might... Uh... I would use that as well for my Reina Roja deck. Yeah. Definitely. Okay. On to the next. Oh, yes. 
Oh my, yes. I, I've, I've seen this card before. Uh, I, I heard about it and I'm like, yes, please. I want this. <laughs> we have here a criminal card. CBI Raid. Three credits to play. It is an event run sabotage. Two influence cost. Designed by the 2013 world champion Jens Eriksson. Make a run on HQ. If successful, instead of accessing cards, the corp adds all cards in HQ to the top of R&D in the order of his or her choice. Now, the reason I like this card is because when I first saw it uh, and read about it, I immediately had the idea of going, having this card and playing it as a first click with my with a runner you run on hq if successful the corp adds all cards in hq to the top of r d now they've got a hand of like five cards or something that's all of those cards that's going back on the top of r d in the order of their choice but if you have uh hd or h um, r d interfaces installed if you have cards like um i think the maker's eye lets you access additional cards in R&D. You use that, make the run on R&D, you're picking up what was the entire hand of um, of the corp. And if they were holding agendas in that hand and had to put them back on the top of R&D, you've just gone and plucked those agendas out. So that could be, that's the sort of uh, little thing that I kind of like the idea of that car being here. I really do. This is one I would use in my, my decks. Um, maybe not just a criminal deck, maybe another deck too. Um, possibly possibly my Chaos Theory deck. That could be interesting. But no, I, I love the entire concept of this. Because if you can, if you can make a run on R&D and be like, I look at your whole hand now. What? Very cool. Very cool. All right, let's um, let's pop on over here to the next card and see what we have. Oh, we have another criminal card. Tech Trader, one credit to install this resource connection. One influence cost. Whenever you use a trash ability, gain a credit. This is one I can see being used by people that like... Um, What's his name there? Geist? Because he's the one that is like, whenever you use a trash ability, draw a card. Then you install this, so you're drawing a card and gaining a credit. Uh, why would you dispose of perfectly good evidence when you can sell it? Eh. And we've got some uh, some lady here with the, the hood, the veil up, looking at what seems to be a pile of trash, maybe? Hard to say. Hard to say, but it's not bad. I like it. All right, on to the next. Oh, here we have our limit six per deck uh, for this data pack. We have net chip. One credit to install har this hardware, consumer grade chip. Two influence. For this, it's a shaper. Net chip can host a program with a memory cost less than or equal to the number of copies of net chip installed. The memory cost of the hosted program does not count against your memory limit. Limit six per deck. Ah, uh, let me read that again just to get it in my head here. Net chip can host a program with a memory cost less than or equal to the number of copies of NetChip installed. The memory cost of the host program does not count against your memory limit. Okay, I think I see what's doing here. So if you've got one copy of NetChip installed, you can host a program with a memory cost of less than or equal to one. If you have two of them, then both NetChips 
can host a program. So you can host two programs, one for each net chip, with a memory cost less than or equal to two. And then three net chips would let you do it up to three, four, five, and six. Which must mean that there's going to be um, that there is going to be some programs with pretty high memory costs coming in the future. Because there is no reason to have six per deck on a limit. A limit six per deck on this particular um, card, which would let you, if you get all six installed, it would let you host um, six programs with a memory unit cost of six or less. Unless they're just giving you more because it's probably going to be trashed. I'm not sure. Hmm. But I kind of like the idea. I kind of like the idea. It's, it's very fitting. Especially for shapers. Okay, on to the next. We've only got a couple more cards to go here. These are the neutral uh, cards. We have an event, Populist Rally, two credits to play. Play only if you have at least one CD card installed. The Corp has one fewer clicks to spend on his or her next turn. Oh, that's evil. Uh, flavor text is, the corporations may be stronger than any of us, but they are not stronger than all of us. Akshara Serene. No influence rating on this card. But that makes the corp only have two clicks instead of one. Ooh. They wouldn't like that. Only an event. Ugh. Pardon me. And it only costs you two credits to play to drop the corp down to two clicks. Not too bad. Oh, and if you look closely at the art, yep, the two guys in the corner here have barcodes on the back of their neck. They're clones. Because the clones are a big thing with this particular uh, uh, data cycle, or what is it? Uh, I think it's a data cycle, they call it. But this particular cycle, the Mumbad cycle. All right, let's uh, bounce off to the next card. Corporate scandal. It is an event current, and it's showing some rather uh, nasty-looking people, possibly clones, in a state of decomposition, or maybe they're still alive. I don't know. Three credits to play this event. One influence rating. Uh, this card is not trashed until another current is played or an agenda is scored. So it stays up even if an agenda is stolen. But not if one is scored. The Corp has one additional bad publicity even if they have zero. So it basically gives the corp a bad publicity. We may be outraged, but we're not surprised. Sunder. One influence rating on this. So this is just something you can play and just give the corp a bad publicity for as long as it's active. Which gives you credits. Hmm. But yeah, this is the kind of thing that's like f found footage of the clones and they're like, Look at this, look at what they're doing, oh my god. Be outraged, people. So, yeah, it's very, very, uh, very interesting. I like the, uh, like the art looks kind of like, you know, disgusting because it's, it's meant to. Um, but I like, I like the flavor that they don't, they don't shirk on that in this game, which I really like. So yes, that's that's it for uh, business first. Uh, we have looked at all of the all of the cards. There are no more. Uh, I hope you've enjoyed it, uh, listening to me ramble on. Again, I apologize uh, for getting it wrong last time. 
I should have had this one as being the latest episode in the archives. And as soon as I found out, which would have been after, pretty much the day after I uploaded it, I found out, I'm like, ah, oh, well, I'll just do another one because I want to kind of catch up. So you get you get a second episode of the archives. I'm sure you won't be uh, disappointed in that. Yes, I will leave it here. And uh, as always, uh, don't forget, if you like what I'm doing, uh, give that like button a little tap. Uh, to let me know, give that subscribe button a tap if you haven't already. So you can be kept apprised of when I post new videos. I try to get something out at least once a week. Uh, if not more than one video, uh, usually I tend to get at least two, maybe three in a week, uh, sometimes more if I have the time. And uh, as always, throw some comments in the comment section. I would love to get some discussion going. Uh, are you following the Mumbad cycle? Do you play Android Netrunner? Uh, do you have any favorite cards, any favorite decks, favorite identities? Let's get some discussion going. Uh, I would love to talk with some people about Netrunner. And just, just ramble on like I normally do. Uh, so yes, uh, I will leave that there. And as always, my friends, until next time, keep running.